Stacy. Welcome to Stacy's Homestead, and today we're going to be making gumbo, rabbit gumbo to be specific. So, um, you're gonna need uh, some andouille sausage. Is a good sausage. If you don't have that, you can get a smoked sausage or a spicy sausage. Um, a rabbit, and if you don't have a rabbit, then you can use duck or chicken, any protein in its place, and then. Bell peppers, you need the Trinity, okay? So you need the Trinity, if y'all don't know what that is. It's in any Cajun food, it's always bell pepper, onion, and celery, okay? Those three are the Trinity, and then you got the Pope, which is um, garlic. So um, those make up the, the flavor profile. And then you need some Cajun seasoning. I like to use Slap Your Mama, that's good seasoning. Chicken broth or turkey broth. Any type of broth that you have, um, I like to mix it up um, with chicken, my homemade chicken bone broth, and my turkey broth. It gives a good flavor. And then, um, you know, just a bit of oil to make your roux. You're going to need some flour for that roux. So I'll bring you in and we'll get started, okay? okay. Alright, guys, so we got our onion. I got two large onions chopped and diced up here. They're yellow onion. You can use any onion you want. I got a bushel of celery chopped up and then I'm chopping up right now four large bell peppers. So and how I do that I just cut it at the ribs like this. Just cut it all the way down. There's no, you know, throw that in the garden because you never know what will grow. And then, you know, just slice them and dice them. And then when we're done doing that, forgot to mention, you're going to need also a couple things. <laughs> forgot to mention, um, you don't have to add this. These aren't necessary, but I like to put jalapeno in. So I dice up about a pound of jalapenos because I like that spice. So, or maybe, I don't know if this is actually a pound. Um, I'll tell you how many I have here. I got two, four, six, eight, ten, about ten or twelve large jalapenos, okay? Then you're going to need some bay leaf. So, I think that's what I forgot. Oh, and green onion to top. I like to top off with green onion, okay? So, we'll cut this up last before we serve it. I like to add some thyme to it as well. So, but yeah, and um, I don't wear gloves when I cut jalapenos. You probably should. Don't be touching your eyes or anywhere else sensitive, you know what I mean. <laughs> Maybe you don't be wearing gloves. So, also you could do the ribs like this. You can add or cut them in squares and this will help you, not squares, in, in like little dime pieces if you want. Nickels or whatever it's called. What is it called? Dime pieces? I forget. Anyways, just chop them up enough because we're going to fry these up with our in our oil after we cook our sausage and stuff. So, yep. So I'm going to get the rest of these chopped up. Alright. I meant coins. That's what I was trying to say. Dice them up in coins. That's an option. Um, so for the last couple of jalapenos, I like to put them in here with some garlic and mince it up really fast, a little bit finer. And with some garlic, I have some already peeled garlic we're gonna add. Um, all right, so I'm adding um, about, I love garlic. You don't have to add this much garlic, and most people don't. But I'm adding a, like maybe three heads, clove heads of garlic. I'm going to put it in here. It's already peeled from, um, it's already peeled from, uh, 
Costco. It saves me time. All right, and we're gonna mince that up really fast, okay? And if you don't do that, it's really easy. Just slam it like that, and there you go. And chop it up, and there's your minced garlic. See? Just go like that. It's all squished up. So that's really easy. You don't have to put it through a tool, a blending machine. See? Super, super easy. Or they have the um, things that you can squish it. The hand one, and I had one, but it's broke. It's an older one. I need to get a new one. All right, so I'm going to blend this up, and then we'll get to cutting our rabbit and our sausage up. All right, guys, all done mincing the garlic up with the, a little bit of jalapeno. And the reason why I like so much garlic, because when you start adding more, it becomes like it's a spice. It actually gets really spicy. So I like my gumbo spicy. So if you uh, don't want so much um, spice, then I would put way less garlic. Because the addition of a few garlic just gives it garlic flavor. But when you put a lot more in, it gives it more of a spice. In my experience, anyways. So... All right, now we're gonna cut our andouille sausage up here. So I got Cajun style andouille sausage, it's smoked sausage. So like I said, if you don't have it, then um, get regular smoked sausage. I've used spicy sausage, like a, a, a really spicy sausage. Now you can do coins, um, which I don't wanna do. I wanna split it down the middle because I get more of the juice uh, oils released out of it so I'm going to split it down the middle I like them more little bite sized pieces for Shannon sometimes I'll split it this way but I'll just split it down the middle one time um yeah we'll just do it one time and then go like this so we got half moon instead of coins but you can make coins if you want. So. And this is what we're going to cook first. Actually, I'm going to sear my rabbit first. Actually, no, you know what? Yeah, so this is what we're going to cook first. And then we're going to take... So we release uh, all the oils out of it. And then we're going to take um, our rabbit and then sear off our rabbit. I'll cut this one in half. You can also do it like this, you know, cut it a little bit in fours. We're going to sear our rabbit in the oil that this creates. Add probably a little bit of olive oil to it to help it out. Okay. Alrighty, guys. So we have one of my rabbits that um, I processed in 2019, if you see. So um, it's my last 2019 one. Uh, I must have missed it because I have other like 220s you know 2020 2021 um rabbits so i miss this in the freezer but it's look at it's nice and good vacuum sealed and uh, airtight no frostbite it's like this type of preserving is awesome all right so we're going to i like to oil my cutting board because it makes it cleaning uh, up your meat easier. It protects the wood from soaking up bacteria. So I advise to put a little bit of oil on before you do this. Okay, still a little frozen. I've had this defrosting in the fridge for a couple of days. And I'm gonna have to let it sit just for a little bit longer to get the um it unfroze because it's all bent up. I can't undo it. 
All right, so I just had to run it over some water just to loosen it up a bit. So we got our rabbit here, a nice sized bunny. Try to pry the arms open here on this one. We'll start breaking down on this rabbit. There we go, a little eyes. There. Okay. Okay, okay. All right, so this is called the saddle. So we got the legs, the ribs, the saddle on it, and then the thighs. And then we're going to just break it down here. So we're going to go ahead and... So I don't like the spine because um, it has a lot of bone. So we're going to just cut the arms really fast. Cut these little arms up. Little arms here. Just go like that down the rib cage here. So we got we got a little arm there. Another one, you have some dried blood, take off right here. And dogs are sitting here waiting for some pieces. Just throw it to them. Little dark pieces here we don't want. All right, so we got two little arms here. And now, here's the rib cage. So, see there's the rib cage. We're going to go this way. Follow down the rib cage. Try to get to the very last one and go down like that. And then do the same on this side. Get as much as you can of the meat on the outside. Find that last rib bone and follow and just slice down the very last rib bone. Just right on the outside of that last rib bone. Sometimes you might get it on accident, but that's okay. Alright, so this we're gonna just save for the um stew pot here. when I make bone broth. Okay? So you can get a little bit of meat off that. There's just barely any meat. So just enough. So this, there's so many bones in here. Um, I just put it in the freeze, back in the freezer for bone broth. It's really, it makes really good bone broth. If you see little pieces of meat, you can take shave off for your might miss a little bit right here. Yeah. Got a little bit right here. So, but for the most part, it's pretty clean. You got a little bit of meat in the saddle or right here. You just go to V if you want. Take that. Do this the same on this side along the spine. The spine has a lot of little, little bones. I don't want to be picking bones off my teeth. So yeah, stew pot is the spine and the rib cage. Okay? So put this aside for the stew pot. Okay, now now we got the saddle 
meat. We'll do last. I'll get these little legs off here and we're going to go at an angle this way. Just down the hip area. And open it up. It's a little froze so it peels on me. You just pop the hip bones open. Do it on this side too. Just at an angle. There we go. Gotta go down the tailbone. that piece. Let's go down the tailbone right here. There we go. So we got these. So we got four pieces. And now what's left is our saddle and our our spine meat. Okay, so I'm gonna move these aside real fast in the bowl. Leg and thighs, our wings, right here. And now, some people don't like the saddles. There's not much flavor to it, but I do. So I'm gonna go down like this, sideways on the spine, like in a V down the spine. You can also weave up and down in the spine area. There we go. Just go down. I'm sorry guys, my battery died on me. So you cut it at the end down towards the bone. And you cut it down towards the bone here. And so here's your back meat. I cut it off. I didn't realize the battery died, but there's back meat, and here's the back meat. So there's that, and then here's the saddles that were connected, and I cut those saddles off. And sometimes, um, if you're frying it up, you don't want to use them. They can be a little tough, but since you're stewing it, they'll be they'll fall right apart. So here's the saddles, also. And then you got a little bit of meat left on this, so just put it in the freezer for bone broth. It's really, really good with my chicken bone broth. So yeah, that's how you break down a rabbit. Um, and then we're gonna start cutting it up. So it's really, really nice pieces of meat here. So we got our back meat and our saddles here. So we're let's start frying up our andouille sausage now. Alright, got our ingredients all assembled and let's start cooking. Okie dokie, so we got our pot on the stove. I'm using my Dutch oven. We're gonna add a little bit of olive oil and heat it up in here. Okay, our oil is heated up here and we're gonna add our sausage. You can use any oil you want. I like to use olive oil. To coat this. And then we're gonna cook this down. And they, they're gonna shrink up a bit and release their oils. I'd say about six minutes, okay? 
Alright, it's been about six minutes and we're going to take this out and put it in a, a separate pot for now. Let me get, get this strainer here. And now we're going to sear our rabbit. And this deliciousness. Get our rabbit in here and sear it off real fast. We can add, I'm gonna add a little bacon grease to it because, or you can do beef grease. I like to add just a little extra grease to my oil already here. Add some bacon grease, good stuff on the counter. I just keep my bacon grease here. Stir the bacon grease in here. All right, now let's go ahead and cook off our rabbit real fast. We fry it up just a little bit. You don't have to cook it all the way. We're just doing enough to just stir it on both sides. Okay, you guys. Do a little at a time here. So we're gonna fry it, stir it up on both sides real nice. And then put add it to our sausage and that we have set aside. Just flip it over. Put them aside. Add some fat to that rabbit. Because the rabbit can be dry. So this is a good way to put some fat back into it. Don't want to cook it all the way through, just enough so they're seared on both sides. Let's go ahead and keep on adding your pieces in. I got my heat on medium here. will soak up a lot of the grease. It's important to do this with the rabbit and the gumbo, it just gives it a really, really good flavor. Okay, we're about done with this. So most people will start their roux now, okay? And they'll start the roux if you know how to make a biscuits and gravy, any type of gravy, that's a roux, okay? This is just a gravy, basically, but darkened. But anyway, most people will start that now. And then add their vegetables to the roux when the roux is done. But I like to sweat and cook my vegetables first a little bit before I add it to the roux. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to sweat and cook our vegetables first and then make a room. So 
Don't worry, the rabbit's going to get cooked in the gumbo itself. Um, we're going to add our celery first for about three hours at least. We're going to simmer that rabbit in that gumbo for about at least three hours. All right, we're going to put down our celery first. I like to do this. Like I said, a lot of people will add this to their roux after the roux is done. But I, I add so much vegetables and stuff. I like to get them smaller before I do that. All right, so this is about uh, five minutes with the celery. The celery always takes so much longer. And the onions mixed together. I'm gonna add a little bit more olive oil to this. Sweat these down a bit, get them smaller here. And then I'll add in my bell peppers and jalapenos. You add in the garlic last because garlic can burn. And you don't want burnt garlic. So always do the garlic last. Alright, so it's been about five minutes. We're going to add in our um, bell peppers. And our jalapenos. See, see why <laughs> I want to do it first. If I was cooking a smaller batch and using less vegetables, I would put it directly in my room. But I need to condense these a bit, and let them cook down, because it looks like a lot, but they're going to cook down real good before I make my roux. I love a lot of a lot of this. Sometimes I, you know, I'm trying to make, not make it as big as a pot as I usually do because not my all my kids are here to eat it. But sometimes I need to transfer to a bigger pot. Ho hopefully it won't. Hopefully it'll cook down just right. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead once these sweat down about halfway. I'm gonna add a. Um, a couple seasonings before I make my roux. I'll add my garlic to this one. I add it to my roux. So we're still going to add these vegetables to our roux when the roux is done. I'm just trying to get them a little bit more cooked before I do that. Alright guys, so it's been about 10 minutes of it cooking down, um, probably got another 10 minutes to go. Like I said, I got a lot of vegetables. I love to add more than you need because <laughs> I just love the flavor. Um, so to help this, we're going to add a little bit of salt. We don't want to do too much salt because we have salt in our seasoning that we're going to add. So we just put a little salt in here to help it release more of the water content to reduce down, okay? It's doing a good job though. Now I'm going to add my onion powder that I have. I had to, my onion powder is organic and it clumps up. So I have to put it in my pumice, my stone thing and grind it back down. So we're going to add some onion powder to it, about a tablespoon. Alright, so probably another 10 minutes and then we'll take them out. Alright, so now we're going to, it's condensed quite a bit. We're going to go ahead and take them out and put them in a bowl here. 
You don't need to drain it or anything. Mm -mm, it smells so good. It smells so good. So what I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to make my roux in this pot. But uh, I'm thinking about transferring pots into a bigger pot because I always like to make a huge batch. I was trying to go small, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay, so now we need to add more grease in here for our roux. So I'm going to put the rest of my baking grease in here because I love that. And sometimes I'll use um, tallow, beef tallow. I just like to use real fats, you know? So when I fry chicken, a lot of times with the leftover flour in the bottom of the oil is what I'll use to make a gumbo too. I have done that in the past because it basically is kind of already the color of the roux. All right, so got that. We're going to add a little more of our olive oil here. And now, so basically you want equal parts oil to flour, okay? So we're going to do about a cup of flour and a cup of oil, give or take. It doesn't have to be perfect. So we're going to slowly add our flour. I like to whisk, do a little whisk action here. All right, so we're going to do a cup of flour. this way. Slowly add it in, but I need at least a cup of flour so I can tell after I add a half a cup, that's, that my measuring thing is a half a cup, if I need to add more oil, which I do. I need more oil. You can put butter in, you can use any type of fat, it just you just need a fat. Okay, alright, so I'm going to add another half a cup which makes one cup of flour, okay? So I got one cup of flour, about a cup of oil, and our roux. We want it the color of peanut butter here, okay? All right, I'm gonna add about a half a cube of butter to this because I just love the flavor of butter and then see if that's enough oil. All right. Let's turn up our heat. I have it on low. Now we're going to turn it up to medium. And so you want to basically the root is the beginning of any gravy. Okay. But with gumbo, you want to fry your flour in oil until it turns dark. It gets nuttier. The darker it is, the nuttier, the nuttier the flavor. But the lighter it is, the thicker your your gumbo. So if you choose to go darker, the flour won't act as a thickener as much. It'll still thicken, but it won't act as like a, a you know, won't get thick as much. So anyways, <laughs> that makes sense to y'all. So we're gonna probably, it'll probably take about five minutes of cooking this on medium for it to turn the color we want it, okay? Mine already has like a darker color to begin with because of the um, vegetables and stuff. So, I could tell it's starting to get darker. So, you want it past like peanut butter. Some people like chocolate milk color. I like it in between. So just keep on cooking it. Medium high. Mm 
you can adjust your flame as you need it. You want it to be able to darken that flower real up. There we go. Now it's getting dark. There we go. Here we go. So see it's getting to that peanut butter color. Now's when you want to start adding your seasonings. I put about um, a little, little pinch of red pepper, a little pinch of a little bit of, um, you can turn your heat down to low, chili pepper. We got some smoked paprika here. I like the taste of smoked paprika, but a couple tablespoons of this is so good. Okay, now we're going to put a little bit of um, our slap your mama in. Use the rest of what I have in here. This has some salt to it, so I'm just add with that tablespoon. And then I add more of this as I um, taste it towards the end. All right, so let's get some garlic salt going in here. About a tablespoon. Okay. Now we're gonna add our go ahead and add our um, garlic and stuff to this. There we go. The heat swells things up. Go ahead and put our vegetables back in here. that good. Turn my heat off just for a minute so it doesn't burn the bottom. Because it's thickening up real nice. So yeah, look at that. Look at that. It looks so delicious. Now I have some chicken broth here. Let's go ahead and cook this for a bit. A little bit longer. Keep it on low. And go ahead and just cook this your roux up. Like I said, most people add their um, got whole garlic in here. Didn't get. Most people add um, their vegetables to their roux. They don't pre-cook it. So if you choose to do it that way, this is where you would sweat them down here. We're gonna cook this stir it around for about five minutes and then add our broth oh my gosh i wasn't recording i'm so irritated <laughs> my camera keeps on shutting off anyways i put a jar of turkey bone broth from 2019 canned and this is my jar opener it's called Pryo jar or um they don't make them no more but you can get them from cookwise off of amazon so yeah they're really good they don't damage your lids at all so anyways I just put a quart of turkey bone broth in. My camera shut off. I can't believe that. I don't like it when that happens. Anyways, now I got some frozen bone broth from making our chicken bone broth the other day. I put it in the freezer knowing I was going to make gumbo. So we're gonna we're gonna add your bone broth to this, y'all. It's my frozen broth. Whoosh! So it's about three quarts, okay? Oh yeah, I don't have to get a bigger pot. So we're gonna stir this up nice. Mmm. Smells so good. And then we're gonna add, I think our pot's gonna be just big enough. Just big enough here. 
now we're gonna scrape I'm scraping the bottom of the pot make sure I got all that flour off the bottom here all right guys so it's about back up to a boil and we're gonna see if we can add our meat without overflowing here so add our rabbit in or your chicken or duck or whatever Okay, add this rabbit in here and then if in my case <laughs> it's a little too full so I'm gonna have it cooked down for about a half hour and then probably add the rest of my then add my sausage here yeah so I'll solve that problem just cook it down for about a half hour but I need to get that rabbit in there I don't like the rabbit sitting out all right so we'll cook it with the lid off on low for about a half hour and then add my sausage in there and then I'll cook it for three hours and then that'll be ready and so while that's cooking while that's doing this I'm gonna um, start my rice and put my rice in my rice maker so you guys use any type of rice you want um, I'm going to use jasmine rice or any white rice, long grain rice, short grain rice, whatever you want. Alright guys, so it's really important to take your spoon, that's why I use this flat spoon, wooden spoon, and scrub the bottom of your pot to make sure nothing is going to settle like flour and burn at the bottom. So every 15-20 minutes I go around and just scrape the bottom of your pot okay all right so while that's cooking we're going to take our rice right here and put it in the rice maker i'm using jasmine rice you use white rice basmati rice any rice you want um i know that i have enough liquid when it reaches my first knuckle like that and that's how i measure it always is perfect so my finger just touches the top of the rice and if the water goes to my first indention right here that's enough water a little tip there like that first like knuckle area right here that's what I mean <laughs> all right so it's been cooking down for about 10 minutes and I'm gonna add um, some time just a little bit of time here about a tablespoon a little less than a tablespoon and I don't want to forget the bay leaves can't forget the bay leaves. I'm gonna put three big bay leaves in. Gives it such a good flavor. So I got this big old thing of bay leaves. Three big things of bay leaves. And as it cooks down, I'm gonna add my sausage to it. So that way I these added here so I'll add a little bit let it cook down a little bit and then add a little bit more and just add the juice there we go all right so once I get all that sausage added then I'll cook it for about three hours okay guys all right guys so it's been cooking for about three hours with the lid on because you don't want evaporation after it, you get it to a good level and look at that looks so good so delicious now you can turn your heat off let it sit for a bit and then we'll pour it over some rice and add some green onion on top and parsley but here's the thing so here's something that I do sometimes and it's not like your like traditional gumbo thing here so one time I was making gumbo and I was thinking red beans and rice on accident and um, I put a jar of uh, my canned kidney beans in here and it actually tastes really really good so you can add a little red bean rice flare in here if you wanted to and add a some a jar of kidney beans to it 
I know it's not like gumbo when you do that, but some I did once and it was pretty good. So, but that's your gumbo here. Super delicious. And we're going to plate it up. Again, now is when you um, taste it and add uh, more spice if you want spice, more salt if you think it needs more salt, which I never need to add more salt because my Slap Your Mama spice has plenty of salt in it. Sometimes um, if your chicken, store-bought chicken, uh, oops, so if your store-bought chicken uh, broth doesn't have too much flavor, you know, so sometimes you might want to add some chicken bouillon to that, add a little bit of flavor. Alrighty, so we got our rice here, and then we're going to get a ladle. We don't have a ladle. It's okay. We'll just use this spoon right here. Go ahead and put it around. There we go. Then let's get, get a rabbit leg here. Put a rabbit leg on the side. Put some green onion on top. Add a little bit of dry parsley if you wish. Or fresh parsley. And there's your gumbo. Now, if you find it's too spicy, also add some red beans in there, like canned red beans. I use my homemade canned red beans because I use the Camille red beans. They're really, really good for red beans and rice and gumbo. But look at that beauty. That's so beautiful. It's so delicious. But the beans, if you were to add I wouldn't do like store-bought red beans, like just do your own homemade red beans if you can them up because that's what I do. They're creamy. Anyways, you can add those to this. It's not like gumbo once you do that though, <laughs> but it's like a different version I guess. But it, So this is your rabbit gumbo guys. It's super good. Okay y'all, so that's your rabbit gumbo and it's very delicious. It's one of my favorite, favorite dishes to make with my rabbit. It just gives a great flavor. And then I like mine spicy, so this is really spicy. Mmm. <laughs> it's delicious. Mmm. It's good stuff. Well, I hope you guys enjoy my rabbit gumbo. We'll just talk to you later, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.